Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 16 by 20 inch blue green spooky little lighthouse painting. It turned out fantastic. You obviously think so. That's why you click the link. You want to learn how to paint this one. So check the description down below. Make sure you get all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. Let's do it just like this. Hey guys, we're back again in the studio. It's Paint With Josh on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. You can see we've covered it in our Bob Ross liquid clear. And then we took the green and the thalo blue, popped it around everywhere, and then popped in a moon right before I remembered, hey, I need to do this intro. So go through all the colors that we have for you. Sap green, thalo green, thalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white. And you can already see we've taken a little bit of our white, made a little bit of a moon up there. Now let's go do some clouds. Let's get into our clouds, guys. It's going to be fantastic. Make the most gorgeous little things happen just with some white paint onto our brush. All right, all the under colors that we put in there are gonna be fantastic. They're gonna shine every time that we touch them with the white brush. So we'll take that white brush up here, and who knows, just pop it, oh, just this most craziest little cloud, just anywhere. Just don't wanna have a whole lot of paint up there, right? The more paint that you put up there, the more it's gonna grow with our pressure, as we all know, right? Just like that. And look at the little differences in those colors. As we come through and we start to push and pull, look, we could literally drag this whole thing across the canvas if you wanted to, with that amount of what, guys? What are we talking about when we're talking about the three P's of paint with Josh? The amount of paint, the amount of... Does anybody know? I'll tell you. Pressure. Lance said it. The amount of pressure that we're pushing on the canvas, right? And look at that. As we get out into that little bit of blue section, it starts to change colors. Oh, it's really wicked neat, you guys. Take the bottom. You can slide it out to the side. You can do whatever you want to do to make your cloud look however you want it to look. And all we're doing is just pushing a little bit more, bringing that color down, letting it get darker and darker, mixing in with all of those colors back there. Just like that, we've literally taken all the white paint and just mushed it off of this brush. So let's go clean this brush off. Right into the old paint thinner can. Well, it's some odorless mineral spirits. And it's not even in a can, it's in like a plastic cup. There we go. Just like that. Now I've got this gorgeous bit of sky so far. And as you can see, right down here where the blue paint is, that's where I want my ocean to start. I've kind of predetermined where I want my ocean to be right back in there. So we can come down maybe even half of that blue section. All depends on what happens, right? So let's make some more clouds as we come up here. We've got some extra room. Let's make some more clouds. We're going to come over here to the white paint and I put it right up into the thing just like this. Not even going to look, just going to load it randomly into the brush. Okay, that's enough. That's enough right there, right? Now, all we're going to do is come in, maybe we'll come in from a different angle. So let's come in like this and just pop straight up through these bits. But you can see, oof, don't touch the moon, by the way. Don't want to get too close and touch the moon. That would be bad. Just like that. So now we've got some crisscrossing action in our, in our clouds, right? All we're going to do is take that same exact brush. We're going to dab it off on a paper towel. I'm not going to hit it with the paint thinner or the odorless mineral spirit cleaner or anything like that. Just dab it off on a paper towel so there's not so much paint on it. And then we're going to come up here. We're gonna to start to make our circles way out here. And then as we get into the canvas, as soon as we touch, we move. And we start moving and moving and moving. We're constantly moving. As long as you're making circles up there, you should be moving in other ways. Other ways, otherwise, you're just gonna stay in one spot and mix all the colors together, right? So as long as you're touching the canvas, you should be moving no matter what. Boom, all the way across. You can crisscross. Look at these two bits of blue up there. Ah, it's fantastic. Fantastic. And then we decide what we want the clouds to look like, all dependent off of our pressure. All right, we pull it down and down into there. I'm going to really start to drag some of that color down into here just by pushing a little bit harder, lighten it up, and you get these really cool things. And then, boom, our little ocean scene is going to come in right from there. It's going to be wicked cool. So let's finish around the sides, popping a little bit of color around the edges wherever we have a little bit of our clouds. Now we're going to come in with a little bit of our liquid white. And let's see, a little of our titanium white, a little greenish mixture that we've been messing around with our clouds. Not too much. Don't want it to be too liquidy, too runny. We're going to set this guy down. I'm going to come up here and maybe in our brightest area of our clouds, like right there where the little brightness is, we're going to touch and make a little circle, just like that, right? Then we're going to attach ourselves to that circle and just start twisting and rotating down and back and forth and here and there. And then we'll decide where it comes down and touches and actually hits. All right, let's go back one more time. Reload the brush with the same bit of white, <clears throat> same bit of color, and then as we go over it again, just wanna be a little jaggedy, right? People say all the time, like, oh, I wish I, I, I can't paint because I don't have a steady hand. I'm like, man, I wish I had a jaggedy hand sometimes, you know what I mean? 
all it takes. A little jaggediness. Very cool little bit. I'm whipping out of that guy. Right in there. Neat little things happen when we do our lightning, right? Anywhere you have like a little spot, you can come back in and literally pop off, right? Where you have like a little bend, pop a little thing out there. But don't do too many. You end up doing too many and then it looks all funky. Again, let's take a little bit of our white, just dump it up there, a little bit of that white. So you have that extra bright little spot. And like I said, that liquid white goes very quickly. So we're gonna take a clean dry brush. We're gonna start our little mixing bits and we're just gonna try to nick it with just the bottom corner as we're mixing around, just flicking it with just the bottom bits every so often, right? And just come up here and oh my, don't do it too many times, otherwise it's you've ruined it, right? Just like that, getting that little bit of brightness to be so super bright and so super soft that it looks like it lit up right where that little bit of, uh, of brightness is in the cloud and shoof, just rocket it out, a little lightning bolt. Very cool, very cool, very simple. As long as you don't overdo it, right? That's the whole thing with Paint With Josh, just don't overdo it and it's simple to do, right? Very cool, these nuclear style clouds. Now we're gonna come back in. I told you where my ocean was way back here. So we can decide what we want our little thing to look like, how far we want it to be. We can go across it and then bring it back into the foreground. Do whatever we want to do. All depends on what you want yours to look like. I always say that. So let's come over here. We're going to grab up this bit of paint just like that. Not going to have too much on the brush. Don't want to have too terribly amount of paint, right? This too much can be too bad. It'll be too much paint, too bright out there, right? So we'll come back in. You can either do it with a, with a yardstick or you can do it with uh, just straight up bare hand to do it back there, right? Just like that. I just feel that if you have your little yardstick back there and you go very softly across it, right? And try not to move while you're doing it. There we go. Very softly across and you get this cool little bit of our horizon. Boom, just like that, wicked. And then again, we can come back and decide what we want our little lightning to look like or if it stays way off in the distance or we totally blend it out and redo it. Very simply, we're gonna come in here, just drop in a few little bits, leaving a disconnection of colors so the two colors aren't touching back there. And then all the way off to the side, right? Sometimes they touch, sometimes they don't, sometimes they touch, sometimes they don't, just like in the real life, in the real world, guys. So remember, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? I'm gonna come back and give you guys some shout outs right now. We are literally filming a tutorial for YouTube simultaneously while showing you guys how to do it live. So we're gonna come in here, very light pressure, and then a little bit heavier pressure. All, decide, uh, all depends on what yours is doing, right? Maybe that little bit of bright up there on the top is that far away bit of darkness or a far away bit of light on the edge of a wave that's gonna crash over and come down. Oh, it's gonna be cool, especially if we make it look like that by putting a little bit more brightness right underneath there. And then maybe we come back up, we connect it, and then we don't connect it, and then we connect it and we don't connect it. And they all look a little bit different. Then we come back in and we start sliding around again. Bing, bang, boom. Get these very cool little bits. A lot of depth, a lot of motion of the ocean out there, right? Okay, where are you guys watching from? Let me, let me see. Let me see where we're watching from, everybody. Let's say if we were gonna put in, because we had this one listed as a lighthouse painting. So let's put in our far off little bit. We're only gonna use these same little colors, just like so. Bing, bang, boom. Just gonna use the same colors, very limited palette. And then maybe way out here, we had this bit of darker land coming in, right? Just right on the edge. Oh, that's good, right there. Start to cover over some of our little bits, not covering everything, but we're covering it up. Maybe it comes up a little bit, a little bit higher over there. Bing, bang, boom, got our little section of land way off in the distance out there that's gonna hold our little lighthouse guy. So let's put him out here. It's probably going straight down. That actually looks really good just for our very first go of, uh, of the run at it. That looks really cool. We're gonna leave it just like that. There was like a little bit of a lighthouse, there's a couple little rocks around the bottom and just like that, guys, you don't have to do too much. You don't have to do too much. Maybe we'll have it come down a little bit into our water and we'll have like this little crashing breaker. A little bit of light out there, it'd be very cool. So let's go wash the brush off and then we'll go back and highlight it, make that little bit of darkness stand out. You're looking at it like, what is that? I don't, what is he talking about? I don't see what that is. It looks like an obelisk way out there in the distance, right? I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. I'll show you what to do. Now, let's go in and highlight a little bit of our 
water, maybe a little bit of our rocks. So we'll take a little teeny tiny amount of white on the end of our little liner or our uh, palette knife. Come in here and just scrape it in just like that. You want it to be random and messy. And that way you have a bit of white right out there on the edge, right where our water would be crashing onto some rocks or something way off in the distance. Very cool. Don't want to have too much detail out there. It brings it too close and we want it to be very far away. Just like that. Now, Let's mix up a little bit of that white and maybe a little bit of the bluish grayish color, just like this, right? As we come in, maybe that little bit of crimsony bluish purplish color that we always use and then a bit of the white. We'll mix it up like that. Don't need a whole terrible amount, just a little bit of dark gray and then we'll come in with a little black, make it a little darker, just like that. Leaving all those little swipes all throughout it. And if it gets too dark, you come back in, you lighten it up with your white. Boom, right? We don't need a whole lot. It's a lot of far away detail out there. Lots of far away detail. So we'll scrape up that little bit and then maybe out here, we just want it to stay. Oh yes, and we don't want to cover up everything either. All right, just out there. Shh. Let it get softer as it went out to the edge. Don't have a lot of coverage. We'll have a lot of that darkness underneath. That's what you want to have. If you show too much of the bright color, then there's no depth and distance out there, right? You gotta have some of that deep dark shadow in there. So if you have a section like this where it's too bright, come back with your bit of black Throw a little bit of, just a bit of chunky paint on there and you get this cool, cool little rocky look to it. Just neat, guys. Just neat. Now, let's take very lightly with our one inch brush, just so, so, so lightly. Otherwise, they're all gonna try to move too far. And we don't want them to move and slide. We just wanna be just like that. Really cool. Now, we sort of need to decide what our top of our lighthouse is gonna look like. If there's gonna be a little aura of light up there or something. So let's get our little bit of white. We're gonna come in, we're just gonna pop in a little bit around the edge. I don't want it to be too bright. It looks like a little treetop out there. I don't want it to be too bright because our light has to stand out, you know, brighter than that. So we're gonna take it, we're just gonna mix it into a little circle until it gets a little darker, a little darker, a little darker. It looks like the eye of Sauron out there. Very cool, it's exactly what I want. Exactly. Now I'm gonna come in and put the top of my lighthouse in by taking a little bit of that black, a little bit of our blue and crimson color, just gonna mix them all up. It's the same color we created the lighthouse top in. And we'll come back with our mall stick. If you don't have a mall stick, it's a very simple little tool to help rest your hand like an acrylic painter, right? Their painting would already be dry, so they could go rest their hand and do little things like that. Us oil painters, we can't do that. We've gotta find a way to rest our hands and not have too much in the way, right? You don't wanna to touch your canvas because it'll be all wet down underneath there and that's not what we wanna have. So we're gonna pull down our little things just sideways, side to side, making our little bit, gonna connect it down. Very cool. Now we've got this open hole inside of our little top. It's got a little, little pointy top on it and a little opening back in there with a little green aura around it. Almost looks like the cloud back there, very cool. Very cool, you guys. Now I'm gonna come in with a bit of white on the brush. Actually, before we do that, let's go, let's get the old palette knife. We'll put the beam out there, right? So just by touching the palette knife to the pile of paint is all I did, just touch it, right? And it gets the little teeniest amount on the end, just by tapping it, right? Little smallest amount. And then we'll come out here, go straight out, just like that shoot it out of that thing right there, right? And then of course we need to make it soft. So we're gonna take our one inch brush and we're gonna to start to soften it down. Right, it wants to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow as it goes. And that's not what we want it to do. So you have to be very soft with our pressure, right? Take some of that white color. We're gonna fill in our space in here where our super bright light would be shining out of. Just like this, right in the center of all of that color right there. We want it to be the brightest. Boom, just like that. So you have that bright light shooting out. You have this wicked little beam coming out. Oh, it's awesome. It is awesome. See if we can't connect these guys just a little bit better. Shooting out of there. And then again, it can get a little wider. Right as it comes down, it gets a little wider, spreads out a little bit more. Just like that. Again, you go back in, you spread it out with your brush. You can do it with your fan brush. You can do it with your uh, one inch brush. All you're trying to do is soften it down and it grow out. Don't touch our lightning out there, right? 
Don't touch the lightning. Or watch this, you can. You can literally touch the lightning, get rid of this whole thing. Watch, come down to our bit. Literally blend it all away. We can go back in and redo it. See how easy it is to get rid of that stuff? Take it, shoot our beam out. Let's put our lightning over on this side now. Just, in, just, just for no reason, whatever. Boom, you can get rid of it. You can do different things. It doesn't have to all be the same all the time. Why don't we take our lightning actually, and we'll put it up into this bit of brightness up in here, right? Just making our little dot. Just like that, a little bit of dot. And then we'll take our line, very small, and we come out to the side. Just be wiggly, be crazy. Let it come down, let it roll through, just like that. Go back, get a little bit more paint on the brush. You don't have to, you don't wanna have a whole huge amount in the beginning. Your, your lightning bolt will be way too thick. All right, just a little jiggly, a little spinning, a little twisting, a little twirling. Get our lightning bolt to come out just like that, wicked. Wicked cool. You can even have it come out in front of that, like it's coming down into the water. All depends on what you want it to look like. That's it right there. Now, let's go back, get a smaller brush, go back to our white paint, and then we can start coming back into our water and having a lot of fun, splish splash, taking a bath with Baby Shark, right? I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna make a little lip, just a little mustache, whoop, whoop, just like that, just like we'd wear. Oh my God, I can't believe I actually got it to stick. I was like, my, my, little, my little thin lips won't let it stick, but I can't, I, we did, it's stuck. It's stuck, right? We're gonna take a little of our light color, spread it out like that. Just adding little bits of white here and there, leaving little bits of dark also, right? Don't wanna have it all be the same. Kind of splitting them up so nothing is all the same color. And then you get these cool little things coming in, guys. Oh, they're wicked. Wicked neat, wicked neat little bits, right? And again, as we start to move them with our bigger one inch brush to soften everything down, turn it into that velvety softness. Everything wants to slide and move, right? So don't have too much paint up there. Otherwise it's gonna move too far, right? Now let's come in again. We're gonna get a little bit more paint. We'll do a second little wave coming in in front of that guy. Maybe over here now we're gonna have the bit. So we'll go like this little, just like that, awesome. That little section where it came up in front over here, maybe we can take this guy, slide him back the smallest little bit, teeniest, tiniest little bit, because we don't want it to all touch. You don't want to lose that dark separator, right? Over there, slide that guy back to that dark separator, wrap it around, and pull our bit of ocean off to the side of our canvas over here. That's going to help it look like it's finished from the edges. Even though this one's getting a frame, we're still gonna finish it on the sides like that, right? Wiped off our brush so there's not a lot of paint on there and then we're going back in, just filling in very lightly. Those little bits, don't wanna lose our dark separator, right? If you lose your dark separator, you've lost all the depth in that bit of wave and you might as well just connect them together if you lose that dark separator, right? Come down over here, little bits off to the edge. Even keep a dark separator in that guy too. Just wicked. Little things we can do, right? Very small little adjustments that we can do very lightly with our brush. Gonna slide it back. Remember, guys, if you want to buy this painting, go for number 825, 835. I think it's 835. I can't even remember now. Go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and search for number 835 once you're in the store. And come in here, load up our bigger brush just like this. And we're gonna load, just make our giant crasher come in like this, right? So we have our bit up here. Maybe he came down, he was gonna roll in. And you start to slide down this way, just like that. And then eventually we're gonna meet up with a little flick over here and a little flick over there and a little flick over there. And X marks the spot, guys. That's the best spot right there. So let's take a little bit of our paint and start to slide it back, very little flicks. Again, don't want it to touch the last bit of color back there. And we don't wanna come in front of our line. So there's a very little, little finite space that we have to fill up, just like that. And then poof, what I tell you, we came over and hit our little our little one side of our X, right? X marks the spot. Now again, we're going in and filling it in very lightly just to have it fill in. Keep those little dark separators. Those are our shadows back there, guys. They're really cool. Now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna start to get longer. And we're gonna go out to the edge, out to the side, coming back to our little X marks the pivot point spot, right? Just like that. Now from this point, we can do many things with our wave. We can start coming down like this. We can head off to the side like this. We can make a little bit of a ridge come down and we get to decide what we want our little bit of our wave to look like as it wraps around and you're like, Josh, this doesn't look like a wave. And I'm like, just trust me, trust the process. Okay, give it a second. Look at all these different colors. This is gonna be fantastic. All right, we're gonna line it up, 
It's gonna come down here and like, again, Josh, this doesn't look like a wave. Trust me, just trust. You've seen the thumbnail if you're watching it over on Facebook, you already know it looks like, a, or watching it over on YouTube because you already know it looks like a wave. So, that'd be really cool. Right here is where we start to look like a wave, right? I'm gonna come in here, gonna load up the white paint and get it in there. Now, we only need a little touch for our eyeball of our wave because it's nighttime and you don't have to have a big crazy eyeball for the wave, right? So we're gonna push it up towards that next little bit of color right there, but leaving our dark separator in between, just like all these other ones. Gotta have our bit of darkness in there. Just helps make it look more depth field, more round, like it's gonna roll over. Now, we're gonna extend the bit of eye down a little bit, but don't make it more than about an inch. It doesn't have to take up our whole bit of wave, right? You don't want the entire bit of wave white uh, or light. That's not good. Now we're gonna come over here, grabbing where we had our bit of eye coming over, and start to fall down, just like that. Now, as we come over to this side, we're gonna rotate the brush, go back up. Boom, gonna have this one crashing off the canvas. It's gonna be wicked. Just like that, gonna roll in. Get all of our water. Come down and land. It'll be really cool. We're gonna take the remainder of the paint that's on that brush, gonna start to slide it back. And now this is where we're gonna start to meet up with all these little lines. Look at that, guys. Look at these little bits. Just coming in, meeting up with them. And like, hey guys, what you up to? Oh, nothing. We're just chilling out here in the surf. About to go surfing. No, nobody gets me. Nobody gets me. Okay, we're going to come in here like this. And because we've already taken all the color, look at that. It's all green. Because all the color has come off the brush, that white color. So now we're going to come back, and we got to go back before we go up. So back, and then up, back, and then up, back, and then up. And as we go up this way, we push harder and harder and harder and harder, and then we line up with our little guys up there. And all of a sudden, we got a wicked cool little pool of water that's starting to happen in here, right? Very neat. Filling these guys in. Then we'll go back with our other brush and make it nice and soft. But initially... That's what you gotta do. And then you can go back and make it brighter, make it darker, you can do all sorts of different things. Just make sure you have this cool little downward angle of our, our bit of uh, foaminess, right? And then we'll go wash this brush off and add some new color to it, make it nice and clean. Nice and clean, we can do our sand, we can do the crashing wave, there's lots of stuff we can do, guys. Doesn't all have to be done in the same order. So, let's come in. And we'll make up all of our little crashing wave water bits up here. So we'll take the black and the crimson and the blue and make up that bit of dark color, right? That shadowy darkness that we like to use in every painting, just like that. Very cool. Now, take a little brush. Let's get a dark brush over here. This brush has been, it's seen so much dark paint that it's like permanently stained this gray color. There we go. And let's slap it in, getting it all loaded up. And now, just like when you go for your, you go get a little little pinch from your honey, a little little cup, a little squeeze, right, on the booty. Come up here, we got to cup this water with this bit of paint. So attaching to this dark separator back here, we're gonna start tapping in, tap, 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 going up into the white, right? Cutting away whatever we don't wanna see, cupping it like that, holding it up, slapping it in, right? You don't have to show every bit so you don't have to take your foam and go all the way down here to where the edge of your last little streak was you don't have to you get to decide what gets shown what gets covered up all that stuff come up above your horizon back over the top of your wave it's gonna look really cool back in there like that now you need to leave a little bit more dark color because this dark bit right here started to turn a little bit too bright we don't want it to be bright oh yes right there a little dark separator connects to that dark separator, helps the water look like it's rotating over. I mean, really cool, guys. Really cool. Got our little lighthouse off in the distance. My goodness. Let's come over here. We're going to take our one-inch brush, right? Nice, soft, dry one-inch brush. We're going to come back and just start to soften everything down very lightly. Going to turn it into velvet. So we start sliding it back. We get rid of all those little brush strokes from our fan brush. Starts getting all nice and soft. and Oh, I just want to go out there and lay on it. Oh, so sweet. Look at that little ridge. Right? That's our little mustache shape. Remember I told you about that mustache shape out here? It's the same mustache shape, just at different angles throughout the painting when you create that little ridge. So gorgeous. Going to pull this guy down the smallest bit. Then we'll go back and highlight all of our little shadowy crashers in here. Going to be awesome, you guys. So, boom, just like that. Wicked cool, look at that. Just rotation of the water, just fantastic. This little 
This little dark separator of this ridge is just fire. Ah, oh, I love it. Okay, let's go in here and we're gonna highlight all this bit of water back in here. So we need a bit of liquid white, right? And the liquid white looks like this. Since we put liquid clear on top of this canvas in order to keep it nice and dark, the liquid white would have turned it white instantly. Oof, bad. But it's the white version of the clear that we use. It's a blending medium. It's very wet. It's very runny like milk. If you were to tip it over, oh, it would spill everywhere, right? Versus these guys, if we were to tip the palette over, it doesn't come off, right? They're thick. Like, seriously, ugh, try to shake it. They won't move, right? They're stuck. They're stuck there like cake icing. They're crazy thick versus that other paint, right? So you got to get some of that liquidy white paint. And I like to keep mine in a little petri dish, I call it, right? Because there's got to be something growing inside here. There has to be. Has to be something growing in there. All right, so we're going to get a little bit of our the corner of our brush. We're going to dip it into our little petri dish. Just like that, grabbing up a little bit of that wet white. And we'll see if anything will fall off. Oh, it's trying to run. There, oh, boop, see it just drip off. This other, there it goes, dripped off again. That other thick paint will never drip like that, right? That's why you have to have this liquid white. It makes it extra wet and extra runny. And you all know we like it like that. So we'll come in here like this. Again, we're gonna pop over. Now the, the darkness that was cupping, right, is gonna be right underneath all this white. So let's start tapping at the canvas like this, right? Let's start tapping at it. Just like that, right? Flapping at it, and then once, as soon as we touch, boom, you have to start moving. Don't flap at, you know, 10, 12 times in the same spot. It's gonna be too much paint. So as soon as you start your contact, right, very lightly, like we're, like we're scared, we're shaking, oh goodness. Very lightly, and then as soon as you touch, boom, 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 start moving. Right there, ride the shadows all the way down. Very cool, right? Leaving all that deep darkness underneath. Now we'll come back with any other bit of light we can get to stick on, right? You don't want to cover up all the shadows. We'll cover about 60% of those shadows. Then we'll come up here and about the same. About 60% of the shadows have been covered with the white. We got about 40% of the shadows of the dark are still there. And then we're going to come back with the one inch brush and have a lot of fun. Now, all this liquid white is really going to want to grow when the brush hits it versus the clouds up here with our very thick titanium white, right? I told it just shows you guys the difference between the two. So we'll come up here and take a little bit, so light pressure. Oh gosh, it's just so, just it wants to disappear just like you wouldn't believe as fast as possible. Right? So with the we get to decide based on our pressure what it looks like, how much it's, you know, a little bit, you want it to be a little bit more undiscernible, push a little bit harder, right? All depends on what you guys want it to look like. Just like that. Let me turn the camera over here just a bit. There we go. Now, we'll take this one. We'll just slide it down a little this bit and then pull it over to the side. All right? Boom. It's going to give us that little wet, watery, sheeny look. But that's not our finished product, though, right? That's not the finished product. Now, we need to get away from that liquid white. Actually, we need to go into it one more time. I almost forgot. Almost forgot. I'm all sitting over here cleaning up the brush going, that was fast. Why did that go so fast? All right, we need to go get the liquid white one more time. Start coming back in here, our little taps again. Tap and move, tap and move, tap and move. A couple little slaps. Now we're gonna go back with less pressure, right? Even less than before, which was less than before. So even less. Sometimes we miss a little, a couple. Sometimes we leave a couple. And you get these very cool little things. And that's not even the finished product of the spray either, because we're gonna come back in and whip paint at this canvas right at the end. It's gonna be so cool. So stick around if you want to see a canvas get painted and then flat, just thrown paint out. Because it's a lot of fun, if you ask me. That's my most favorite part of doing this thing now. A little bit of white right out there, helping it just blend in, keeping our dark separator dark. Boom. Very cool. Starts to rotate over, fall down in, right? Now we can even take our little liner brush, come grab some of that dark paint that's already there and go back before you come down. Back and then line up. With one of these little guys coming down here. It doesn't all have to be the same. You don't want to have too many. Just a couple little bits and take our dark separator and connect it through with that liner brush, just like that. Rolling through, boom. Very cool. Just to have it the, the teensiest bit darker than that light colored paint, right? Now we're going to come back, getting rid of all of our little bit of white, liquidy white pile. We don't need that really wet white pile anymore. We want it to be nice and dry and thick. 
So we get rid of that. And then we come over here, grab up our brush again, and here's where we start making our highlights of all of our foam and stuff. All right, so these little bits, we're gonna start out on the edge, because out here where the moon is hitting it, versus back here, where that's kind of hidden by the shadow of the, of the water itself, can be a little bit brighter, right? So out here, we start dropping very lightly. Very light, not the same in every place. Boom, just like that. It starts to shine in different places, right? Now we've started to drop some of the color off of this brush and it started to change into that green color. So now we can start coming back in. And we'll go back in there and it'll automatically start to change because We've used a brighter, whiter paint out here and let it get naturally darker as it went back in. Very cool. Don't lose all those neat little streaks and details. That's the fun bit, right? Now we're gonna take the same brush, gonna come a quarter inch underneath wherever we would have a bit of our foam, which is gonna, on this one, go at, down at almost a 45 degree angle. Just like that, get that cool little bit. Now, you guys have to tell me, we're gonna have to push it down and swipe it across back and forth, right? So, do we do a lot of pressure? or a little pressure. A lot of pressure, little pressure. A lot of little, lot of little. You guys gotta tell me in the comments. Okay, so let's see what you guys are saying. We got lot, we got little. Gojo, we got Raven says a little. Juicy says a lot. Mia says a little, uh, definitely a lot. Juicy Fool, Hypnotic says a lot. Uh, Kylie says a lot, Alex says a lot. Now, I'm gonna show you guys both of the things, both options, okay? Now, here's what we're gonna do, very light pressure. Just like that, same amount of pressure along the whole canvas, and then swiping across. Now, does that look like sand to you guys, or should we use a lot of pressure and then see what it looks like? You tell me, I'm just here to do what you guys say. Does that look like sand to you guys? Certainly, maybe not, right? So let's see what we do now. Let's go a hard pressure, really push down. Push, bend those bristles. See how far and hard I'm pushing on them? Bop, bop, bend them down, right? now. I totally agree. That does not look like sand either. If we were to flip this canvas upside down and that was up here in the sky, it would look like Aurora Borealis, right? So we have to swipe it side to side, like I was saying, in order to make it look like that wet sandy beach. Now, do we swipe it towards the wave first or do we swipe it away from the wave first? We have to do both directions. I see a lot of both. So I'm gonna show you both here. We're gonna go up towards the wave with a lot of pressure. And instantly you can see both of those colors are gonna to touch together and we're gonna lose our dark separator that we've had all over the canvas, right? Dark, 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 right? We're gonna lose that if we push it towards the wave. So we've gotta pull it away, let's try that. Let's grab this color, we're gonna very roughly with a lot of pressure, pull it away from that light color, right? Spreading it out, all those vertical swipes, we just spread out into horizontal swipes and that makes it look much sandier. Now we've gotta shoot it towards the wave, right? Gonna push it in. Like we're sweeping out the junk, spring cleaning in here. Sweep it out, sweep it out, sweep it out, and poof, all of a sudden, you've got this little dark separator under there. You can shrink it as low as you can get it. Totally up to you. It's like a sequin pillow. You can move this paint back and forth. Slide it one way, you get one color. Slide it back the other way, you get another color, right? So, just like that, very simply, very easily, you got a wicked little wave starting to come together, right? Boom, just so cool. So stinking neat, you guys. Now, then, we, then we can decide what we wanna do with our bit of wave, right? And making our bit of spray or our bit of uh, our little foamy action look a little bit more realistic versus that kind of a, it's kind of a straight line, right? Kind of a straight line. So we're gonna get a little bit more paint on the brush and grab it from our wave up here. We're gonna start to come down. We're gonna pull it down. We're gonna change it, slide it out over here. Don't wanna get too crazy. Right? We get to decide what our little bit of water looks like, all how we pull it. And just like that, this whole wave is gonna start to come out and grow in towards, it's gonna fall out into my painting room in here, guys. It's gonna be wicked cool. Just like that, get that bit of light color out here. Very cool. Very cool little painting, if you ask me. Now we'll take our two inch brush again, just to soften it down. Sliding everything down towards the bit. Right out here where there's no dark separator to cover up, so you don't have to worry about it out here. All right, but back in here, we're gonna slide up, sneaking it in, shrinking down our little bit of darkness back in there, just as small as you can get it. You know what I mean? You get to decide what it looks like just by how you swipe at it, and you get to play with it. That's the most fun bit. 
the most fun little bit of the whole painting process is yours is gonna look slightly different than everybody else's and that's the best part, right? That's the most 100% bestest part of the whole thing. Now, you guys are gonna start to name this painting. You get to choose the name and it's available to purchase. If you wanted to buy it, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, search for number 835. And that's this gorgeous little painting right here. It's gonna be fantastic. Get a little of that greener color back over here so we sort of blend up together. Aha, sweet. Okay, I'm gonna wash off these brushes. You guys are gonna start typing in a name. What do you wanna name this painting? Just like that, get up our liquid white onto the edge. Slide it out there onto our palette. Grab a little titanium white as well, because you don't want it to just be pure liquid white. It's too runny. So a little titanium white, a little liquid white, and here we go, guys. Come in like this and just start throwing paint at it. Just blah, 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 blah. You get all these little spray bits. Just the most gorgeous thing. And you get all that depth that would take you 10 years to paint all those little teeny tiny dots. Boom, just like that. Wicked, wicked. Take your painting paint it gorgeously, and then chuck paint at it. That's my favorite part about doing the whole seascape, and we almost forgot, right? Now we're gonna go up and do the same thing in the stars. I just wanna get a little bit of that paint off of the brush. So again, we're gonna come up here and just out into this deep darkness, very lightly, less paint coming off the brush, because I don't want the stars to be as thick as the water wavy bits down here, right? And the cool part is, sometimes you can't tell what's a star and what's actual spray from the water, which is really cool. So this looks like a radioactive, like, I don't know, this never beast type of sky. And yes, I have a daughter, okay, I watch Tinkerbell too. Tinkerbell and the never beast, don't tell me you never watched the never beast, it's one of the best ones. One of the best ones. I don't care, I'm a dad. I'm a dad, man. I watch my fair share of cartoons. I still watch cartoons, what am I talking about? I love cartoons. Cartoons are the biz. All right, let's name this sucker right here. Now that we got some stars, everything's nice and done. We'll put the family in it, so don't trip. Someone call it Ocean Gate. That's kind of cool. This one is so dope. Lighthouse Storm, I dig that. Please finish the lightning bolt. What's there to finish? Let's see, Lighthouse Keeper. Ooh, that's cool. Lighthouse Keeper, I like that. Green Wave with Envy Midnight Eclipse. Let's see, Aurora Storm, Thunder Thrill, that's cool too. Toxic Tides, oh, I like that. The Green Lantern, that's cool too, Hypnotic Beauty. Let's see, Taser DD. Taser DD, you are getting the, you get to name it, I like that. Toxic Tides. Everybody go follow, uh, follow Taser DD. I just pinned her comment, Toxic Tides. That's what we're gonna name this one. And that's really cool. Oh shoot, I did forget to, uh, Finish the lightning bolt like they were saying. We need to, there we go, just very lightly cause a little flickage up there just to have it look like it's coming out and lighting up that little bit of cloud. Just like that. Wicked. Thank you for reminding me. I would have looked at it later and been like, what the heck? Why did I forget to do that little thing, right? So we'll come over here. Toxic Tides. That's a cool title, guys, for number 835. So get over to the store and search for 835, or if you give me like a half hour and I can change the name, we'll change it to Toxic Tides. Very, very neat, very neat little title. So this is 835 on the career, really cool. We did this one on 625 of 23. We're all gonna go to paintwithjosh.com to find my Facebook, my YouTube, my live schedule, the supplies list that you need in order to paint with Josh. We're gonna go over there to paintwithjosh.com and find it. And this one is called Toxic Tides. Wicked cool. I like that. I like that name. Okay, so we're going to come over here. We're going to spin this thing around. Ow, put it right back up here on the easel with the birds. You know how mad Bailey would be if I did a painting and the birds weren't in it? She'd be so angry. I'm going to put them over here today. Just like that. A few little bits. Flying through the sky. Coming in. Wicked awesome. Now, let's go back. The heck was I gonna do again? Oh, I gotta sign it. I'm gonna sign it, and then we gotta finish the, uh, I gotta do the outro for the tutorial. I got you, I remember. I remember, I remember now. Let's go over here. So, throw the old Josh Hancock on, and then I really can't wait 
to see your guys' version. It turned out fantastic. Make sure to send it into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And bye bye